pleasure now to welcome in the man with swagger, and he should have swagger after what he did in the alumni game. He is assistant head football coach Ed Lamb. Ed, welcome back. Congratulations on a fantastic event and an incredible individual performance. Everything you've taught your players is validated once again. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, I'm I'm really ho I appreciate the compliments, but I'm holding out. The safeties um, encouraged me to play. I wasn't planning on playing, and they're going to grade the video. So I don't oh, know. Oh. I don't actually know how I graded out. I appreciate. I think the you're going to do okay. But, you know what you've yeah. done. You know what you did out there. Uh, well, there were plays made, but it, you know, in, in our grading system, it's about the plays that aren't made, the okay. plays that should be made. <laughs> okay. Did you feel for a moment like you were a kid again? Because it seemed like everyone kind of played that way. Yeah, I, I really feel like that, um, you know, probably a lot of guys went into it with the same idea, which is, okay, how, how much are we going to put into this? Let's let's just stay healthy, have a good time. But it's competitive. It doesn't matter if it's a cornhole game at a barbecue. You, know, you, see, you get a bunch of ex-athletes together, then it's, uh, Look at you know, this. it's time Look to compete. Look at this teenager running around here. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. I haven't seen you run that fast in a while, Ed. And, and uh, you, you should have after that play. That was fantastic. And how about this here? And then you get it on offense doing your thing. Yep, that's right. In, in my mind, it looked a lot more athletic than uh, than it is. Now I'm watching it on a film. Well, T.O. came right and there. put a cleat right in me oh, right there. That, that hurt, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was a good time. You know, that touchdown you had, it was thrown behind you a little bit. So you had to adjust mid-flight, we'll call it, to pull that one in. And, uh, and Team Royal made a charge there at the end. Oh, we did, yeah. yeah. The game, I think, was starting to get out of hand. I thought the, from a roster standpoint, it looked like um, those the Navy had uh, first pick and maybe the first several picks, <laughs> okay. but uh, Royal hung in there. We didn't have very many young players, but we had guys with a lot Look, of Look, you had to leave a You were eight seconds away from winning the game. In fact, everybody had yeah. been like, oh, Royal's going to win the game, and then Max Hall crossed the line of scrimmage by five yards, and there was no flag, and then they throw a Hail yeah. Mary. Yeah, I think there were a few no calls on that on that <laughs> play, but I got to give uh, Max and, and Keel – a lot of credit and uh, Hoffman came in there and threw his body around right before the ball came down. It was, it was in the end, it was just an awesome way to end the game. Now Kalani has said that he wants to continue to do this annually and make it bigger and better. Where do you stand in that conversation of bringing this back every year? Um, it probably doesn't matter where I stand. Nobody consulted me in the first place about <laughs> having it. Had they, I, I, there's no way I would have predicted that it would have been, <laughs> you know, what it turned out to be. What a great night um, for all of us and for to have fans show up. 7,500. Yeah. And the way you guys, you know, you put it on. And I wasn't aware, really, the social media um, part. But, uh, you know, I guess a lot of the uh, the guys knew about this. I was getting text messages from former players and things oh, yeah. like that. So it was it was. It was just an awesome event. I, I think, think it's a great idea to keep it, keep it going. Next year, and as it moves on, uh, there will be players that are saying, I want in, as opposed to phone calls saying, will you play? Uh, because, one, we got thousands of alumni, and, uh, and you only need, you know, what, what, what do we have, like 40? What do we have, a roster of about 40? Sounds right. So you only need this small group. The big reveals can be who's going to be the quarterback in February. Sure. You double the crowd from this year to last year just based on momentum. And some of the best things in sports are just little ideas that aren't completely necessary that turn into spectacular events that don't go away. And this this may be one of them. Do you think this is one of them? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's great to keep it going. It was uh, everything that uh, we could have hoped for from a program standpoint. A lot of smiles out there. Definitely. Ed Lamb is with us on BYU Sports Nation. It was the perfect way to wrap up spring football. At least it felt that way to us. And spring ball was a successful venture in talking with you after days of practice and with Kalani and all of the coaching staff. How would you sum up spring ball overall? More importantly, where did BYU football get better over the course of that essentially three weeks of practice? I feel like that um, we got better in terms of learning to practice together. Um, you know, the head coach always has to set the tempo or the contact level of spring practice. And really, it's based on the veteranship of the team. And um, in other words, do we have a young team that needs to work on uh, live full speed tackling to the ground? Or do we have a veteran team where we need to work on the fundamentals of, of staying on our feet with block shed and blocking and tackling um, up high, so to speak? And I, and I really thought Kalani set that tone from day one. And the team has learned to practice well together. I feel like we, we came out learning how to practice fast but safely together. And that's the, that's the mark of a veteran team. If you watch an NFL practice, you're going to see a lot of guys going really fast but staying off the ground. And uh, I know that's not an exciting uh, you know, answer to the, to the question, but 
But if you want to be a really good football team, you have to learn how to practice fast and safe. That's the exciting part, yes. is that you want to be a really good football team, That's and right. you're seeing things that would signify you're a really good football team. I think so. We have, we have veteran guys that expect to win. They know how to work to win, and we have to pull the reins back. Is there a Big 12 aura about around this program now? I mean, July 1, 2023, the school is a Big 12 member. You're going to get your football schedule in October for your first Big 12 season. But we got the sense that there was. What, what about from your position as a coach as you look around at the, the guys you've got and what you're building? Does it feel like a Big 12 member moving forward? Well, you just said it. It's the guys, right? And so... It's de it depends which guys I'm talking to, and, and if I'm talking to the whole team, if I'm a, if I'm thinking about the whole team, we've got a group of guys who will never play in a Big 12 game, and it's important that those guys finish off this season in their career right. in the right way. And yet, when we're out on the road or recruiting right now, when we're having phone conversations, we're recruiting guys that will only play in the Big 12. And so we really, I, I think, are wearing different hats right now, and it's important that we look out for the guys and who the guys are and who we're talking to. You probably just answered my question in terms of what has changed the most, recruiting and who you recruit. But how quickly did that transition take place when you were essentially getting into doors that otherwise you would not get into because of the Power Five now implementation in 2023? I think we saw it right away with uh, with the transfer portal and guys that uh, were, were reaching out to us that maybe otherwise wouldn't have. I think we're seeing it mostly with local guys that uh, maybe have grown up BYU fans or grown up would considering BYU as one of their top choices. But in the end, they were convinced that they needed a power five experience for, for whatever that was worth, right? There's a label on it. It is reality. There's public perception is reality. And that public perception that, you know, the moment it changed, we started to see signs that it was going to change for us. Such a big deal for BYU to get through spring healthy. There were a lot of guys that were down after last spring that uh, you weren't able to use during the fall. Uh, Harper, I think, is one. And, and Batty took a while to get back. Uh, um, and, and there were a handful of others. And there's a couple of guys that got hurt this spring. But by and large, you come out healthy. And if the goal is to be healthy in November, you got to be healthy in March. That's right. And and uh, and that's kind of been the area where BYU hasn't been healthy. This last November, a perfect example, heading into that bowl game. Is this the kind of thing you're looking for as depth and health going, how are we going to, we, our biggest bowl game is going to be at the end of the season moving forward. How do we be healthy for that? That's right. Yeah, it's a constant, uh, it's a constant tug of war it's a constant battle it's a, it's a constant decision how much do we press there's a risk reward to how hard we practice and how physical we practice and and obviously we you know we can't go out there in in uh, no pads every day and just and do walkthroughs but uh, you know there there's a decision to meet it made every day I think Kalani's established credibility he knows what he's doing and um, and so we're all happy to follow his lead all right you coach the safety specifically and I absolutely love Malik Moore and I love the way he handles social media and the way he handles himself around fans. He's a good student. He's a good player. Uh, but it's bigger than him, that whole safety group. So other than Malik, what are you most excited about from the group of safeties that you're going to be coaching? Um, you know, Hayden Livingston's played a lot of snaps as well. I love what, what Malik does and, and who he is. Uh, being being a part of the recruitment of him and seeing him grow over the years, that's, that's always a real uh, pleasure for coaches to see that over a period of a number of years, the way a guy matures and develops into a man. Um, but, yeah, Hayden, Hayden Livingston's played a lot of quality snaps for us. Micah Harper didn't play last year with his injuries, but he's, uh, he's in the group now. Uh, JaVale Brown has been um, stepping up in spring ball significantly. Really like uh, the, the way that um, – um, at the strong safety position, Talon Alfrey is back from injury, and, and we expect some nice things out of him. It's a, it's a solid, deep group. I was just talking to the group um, the other day. We, we, it, Matt Criddle is moving back from linebacker to safety, and so he'll, he'll offer us a lot of veteranship. He's made plays. He's made interceptions, PBUs, yeah, tackles yes. in games. He expects to make them again. It's a really solid group, top to bottom. I noticed you didn't appreciate the feedback you were getting from the sideline from uh, Caleb Hayes and uh, <laughs> D'Angelo Mandel yeah. trying to substitute you out of a goal line stand, which uh, preceded your play of the game defensively yeah. in the corner. Yeah, yeah, that was so. That was planned, uh, you know, from the start. I told them watch this. I told <laughs> them how to take an opposite leverage, stem from inside to outside. Add some confusion to the offense. Uh -huh. Give yourself a uh -huh. chance. They saw me lined up inside, and they were they were they were all 
you know, flustered about about my strategy. They ought to have known better, and they will know better going forward. I think, you know, in terms of, of establishing credibility, yeah. I did. Fantastic. That's on Devon Blackman, too. Yeah. I and mean, that's not just any guy. That's, yeah. that's the super athlete. This I is mean, why. Yes. This is why when Kalani took the job, the first person he called to join his staff was Ed Lamb. Because I could break up a pass in the alumni game. Exactly. Year years six later. of our yeah. tenure. Years later. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. It's a long journey. That is the highest compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long journey, but here we are. Yeah. Ed Lamb is with us on BYU Sports <laughs> Nation. As uh, a defensive group whole, uh, I was mentioning earlier, like, my biggest surprise was his defensive line and how complimentary Kalani was of the defensive line. What can you add to that conversation? What did you see from the defensive line that makes you feel like, yeah, I see why Kalani said they are under the radar and they've been really good this spring? Uh, well, first, they're they're young players. I mean, we we believed in them when we recruited them. You know, we're, um, it, it's not our role to pundit whether they uh, were were. were good takes are not in recruiting. Our role is to recruit the guys, believe in them, and develop them. And I think that Alexa Tuiaki and Preston Hadley have done a great job of telling these guys where they need to be. And so we've seen a lot of guys go from the 260 range, Hunter and Nelson, to, to now in the 300-pound range. We've seen Tyler Batty go from 250-ish to 275-ish. Okay. And these are these are big, strong boys. Uh, Caden Hawes was always there, but now he's got help. You know, and, and this is a big, strong group that's very motivated, and they're, they're just older. They're more veteran. Well, eight or nine guys have starts. Yes. You know, so when they take the field, they, they've been out there. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Blake, Blake Mangelson's another one. Yeah. He, he looked very impressive. He's up to 270 pounds. Good grief. That's a lot of Steak Island. They've been to Steak right, Island. Right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. We're thinking of a new Island. TV series called Steak Island. Uh, yeah, I don't know Steak Island. Sounds, <laughs> sounds, sounds like a nice place. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> hey, we appreciate you coming in on uh, essentially what was going to be one of your days off, and we hope you get some, some breaks. You know, I know golf is always in your summer, and so, Dave. It's going to be in our summer. Yeah, that's yes. what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah looking can, forward can to Can we that. commit you, yeah. speaking of commitments, commit you to play golf with uh, Dave and myself at some point? You Absolutely. got it. Let's do it. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. let's go, Ed. Yeah. Love that, man. Uh, enjoy the summer. Send love to your family. And always, as always, take some BYU Sports Nation karma for whatever you need it for. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you got it. Yeah.